If you've been looking at getting a flagship phone but don't want to spend flagship money, there's a good chance you've already come across the Google Pixel 6 and the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. They're two of the better phones in this market. But which should you buy? I'm Cam Bunsen from PocketLints and in this video I'll hopefully help you to decide. And while you're here, if you do like it, please do hit that thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell, and then you don't miss any more of our videos. There's more than one way in which the Pixel 6 and S21 FE differ. And the most obvious way is in the design. As glass slabs go, the Pixel 6 is very different to pretty much anything else on the market. Its bold camera strip that protrudes significantly from the back expands all the way across the width of the phone. Whether you love it or hate it, there is some practicality here in that you can lie it on its back and it won't wobble, unlike those phones with their camera units in the corner. Despite Samsung sticking very much to that boilerplate format, the protrusion on the FE is very minimal. So while there is some wobble, it's not major. And there are a couple of things that work in Samsung's favour. First, the phone is noticeably slimmer. In fact, it's a full millimetre thinner and also noticeably shorter. That makes it a bit more comfortable to hold and easier to hold for longer periods. And one surprising benefit is the materials used. While glass on the Pixel is definitely a more premium material, the matte plastic on the Samsung makes it less prone to slipping off things and is warmer and softer in the palm. Both the phones have quite square designs though, and both feature very strong feeling and sturdy aluminium frames. So you know they should be able to take a beating. Both have the same Corning Gorilla Glass Victus on the front too, for Corning's most durable screen protection yet. They'll both even survive the odd occasion they come into contact with water, whether you've accidentally dropped it in the sink, or the toilet, or used it in the shower, because they both have IP68 water resistance. Now the two have similarly skinny bezels around the display, but to the eye, the pixels do seem a tiny bit chunkier. And one small difference you can't see from the outside is the vibrator motor. Pixel has a much nicer haptic feedback, feeling more like a tap than a buzz, where the S21 FE has a more traditional buzzy feel, and neither has a physical fingerprint sensor either. Both use in-display ones, but we found the Samsung to be more reliable generally. It seems to register and unlock quickly and reliably nearly every time. One last minor thing, the buttons. Pixel's power button is above the volume rocker, making it a bit harder to reach naturally, where Samsung has it within easy reach below the volume rocker. Still, you soon get used to either, so it's not something I'd base a decision on. Funnily enough, there is an area where these two phones are virtually identical, or at least very, very similar. That's in the display spec. They both feature the same 6.4 inch 1080 by 2400 AMOLED display with HDR10 plus support. But there are differences, mainly in the refresh rates. Pixel 6 reaches up to 90 Hertz, where Samsung goes all the way up to 120. But you'd be hard pushed to really spot the difference between these two peak refreshes. Especially since there are a few really popular apps that take advantage of the highest refresh rates available. If you were to glide around the user interface, record it at a high frame rate, and watch it back in slow motion, you would see it. But otherwise it's hard to tell, since its peak refreshes aren't active in most apps. Now in their default modes, Samsung in Vivid and Pixel in Boosted, they have quite different approaches to colour and contrast. With the Pixel 6 seeming a bit more contrast heavy, which can help things look a bit sharper artificially, but then you lose some of the colour and the texture of the elements in the screen. You can of course change the tuning somewhat with Pixel offering two additional colour profiles and Samsung giving you a bit more control over the colour balance. But overall Samsung's screen is brighter and that can be a genuine benefit, whether it's because it makes it easier to see outdoors or because when you're watching HDR shows on Netflix and you're in a dark scene you can see more of the scene clearly. Pixel does struggle a little bit with those. As for sound they're both very similar, they have stereo speakers on them and they sound pretty much as loud as each other, with similar approaches to the frequency balance, so again, not something I'd base a decision on. Moving on to performance and battery, and Google's Pixel 6 runs on Google's own processor called Tensor, which is similar to Samsung's Exynos branded chips. But if you're on a Geekbench benchmark test as an example, you'd see it doesn't quite reach the same numbers as the S21 FE, which comes in two variants, the, the Snapdragon 888 and the Exynos 2100. But there's not a huge amount in this. This particular S21 FE has the Snapdragon 888, and when you use either phone, the feeling is one of speed and fluidity. It'll load the most demanding games quickly without lag or stutter. 
We can't say we found one hugely better than the other here. It feels very fluid and very responsive on both phones. The interesting thing I found about Pixel is the longer I kept using it, the better the battery performed. As the software became accustomed to my usage patterns. At 4614 milliamp hours, it does have a larger capacity than the 4500 in the Samsung, but there's not much in it at all. And because they're similar, we didn't see a significant difference between the two in regular everyday usage either. Neither is quite good enough to make it through two full days with my own moderate usage, which is about two or three hours of screen time a day, but they'll comfortably make it through a full day and end the day with around 40% left over. Both charge at similar speeds too, offering about 50% charge in 30 minutes. You can even charge them both wirelessly. On the whole, when it comes to speed and fluidity and battery life, again, this is one area I definitely wouldn't base my decision on. But the next comparison might be, and that's obviously the cameras. And when it comes to the cameras, the two phones have slightly different makeups. The most obvious being that Pixel doesn't have a dedicated zoom camera like the S21 FE does. But that doesn't make as big a difference as you might think. It still has a pretty good 2x digital zoom, which gets you closer to the action and gives you a decent sharp image. When you compare results, particularly in daylight, you'll see the two have different approaches to colour, but both can give you that vibrant, slightly unnatural look, but of the two, the Pixel seems closer to natural colouring, and has better detail. The thing we most noticed though was that Google's HDR performance was better. So in the parts of the image where you have bright highlights due to direct light, the Pixel was much better at evening those out and retaining the detail, like on these fern leaves for example, or on the fence in the background of this shot. It doesn't matter if we were using the ultrawide or the main camera, it was the same. Both feature a decent night mode abilities too, offering a way to shoot low light, completely handheld shots without any need for a tripod. Although there are differences here, they are both solid. Using the main camera, the Pixel seemed better at lifting detail out of the shadows, but Samsung's ultrawide seems to lift more light by default. Although results from both ultrawides at night time can be quite odd and unnatural looking. Now spec sheets and hardware performance is only one element of how these phones perform. Another big difference and a big decider for me personally is the software experience. Because even though they both run Android 12, they just feel very, very different. One UI 4, which is Samsung skin, is very similar to previous versions with big colourful app icons and lots of extras that Samsung likes to add in. It has adopted Android 12's ability to theme the interface based on colours from wallpapers, but that's about all that's visually changed. Most of it stylistically is pretty much the same as before, which you might like. Google's version is quite different. Everything from the drop-down settings and phone dialer and pre-installed keyboard gets themed, and it's bigger and bolder. And there are these new widgets giving it a much more whimsical feel. It's a redesign that will certainly divide opinion, but I happen to like it a lot. And it's one of the biggest reasons I choose the Pixel 6 over pretty much any Android phone at the moment. So in the end, as a sort of verdict, there are a couple of reasons for choosing the Pixel 6. It of course has that new software experience, which I really like and it has the better camera performance in my opinion too. But if you care more about media consumption, I think the display on the Samsung is better, and the slimmer, more comfortable build is something to consider as well. Or if you really want a zoom camera, there is that going for Samsung. So despite my own personal choice being the Pixel, the Samsung definitely has its appeal, and it's not a bad choice at all, especially if you're not keen on Google's complete overhaul of the Android user interface. So let us know which you'd go for, or which one have you gone for? in the comments down below, or you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Cam Bunton. And if you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell, and then you don't miss any of our uploads. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.